Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're taking a look at a new EV from revived British Mark MG, the ZS. We also have Mercedes' new C-Class and a new hotter version of the Audi RS5. Plus the facelifted Jaguar F-Pace and the all-new Ford Ranger. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Testing of the first all-electric Rolls-Royce is underway. The Spectre, Rolls-Royce's upcoming luxury EV coupe, is undergoing a 2.5 million kilometre testing programme, taking place across the world in various climates. Seen here on the French Riviera, the Spectre prototype is being subjected to rigorous powertrain testing, both on road and on track. The new electric platform being developed contains more than four miles of wiring and doubles up the battery packs to be used as sound insulation. The Spectre is expected to be revealed in production form in early 2023, with the first customer deliveries by the end of the year. In the not-so-distant past, MGs were for tweed enthusiasts and real ale drinkers. Now though, under its Chinese ownership, MG has a new lease of life building affordable hatchbacks and crossovers. It even builds electric cars, including this, the recently facelifted ZS EV. It's a compact SUV that's big on practicality and value. It undercuts all of its rivals on price, but it's no bargain basement assortment of cheaply made materials and poor build quality. Instead, it's well put together and comes with just about everything more expensive alternatives do. Sure, it's no Rolls Royce, but it looks decent and the long range model can do more than 270 miles on a single charge. The standard model achieves a slightly less impressive 198 miles, but that still puts it ahead of the more expensive Mazda MX-30. A single electric motor powers the front wheels, producing 154 brake horsepower and good for 0-62 in 8.2 seconds. That may not sound very quick for an EV, but the ZS is on par with rivals from Vauxhall, Peugeot and Hyundai. The interior styling is nothing to shout about, but it comes with lots of kit, including a smart infotainment screen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The plucky MG is far from the most exciting new EV on the market, but with prices starting at under 30 grand, it's one that's well worth considering. After nearly seven years on the market, the Jaguar F-Pace has been given a much-deserved refresh. Among the long list of changes are a sleeker exterior design, reshuffled powertrain options and updated interior tech. As with most mid-life redesigns, thinner headlights kick off the updates with added LED daytime running lights similar to those found on the I-Pace. The front end also boasts a more bulging bonnet and a slightly more squared off grille. As a result, the front now looks more compact and almost loses the overinflated SUV look. Almost. Ironically, for a facelift, the rear is where the changes are the most noticeable. Following on from the original car, it is pretty much an adaptation of the new F-Type's rear end. The rounded taillights have been dropped for thinner, more minimalistic streaks, and the boot lid has been given a few extra curves. 
Inside, both drivers and passengers alike benefit from an even more luxurious interior. There are various bits of tech that have found their way into the car, notably a new infotainment system which we've now seen on a few different JLR cars. The screen in the middle of the dash has grown from 10 inches to 11.4 and the Pivi Pro system powering it has also been upgraded with a new home page layout. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well as Amazon Alexa thanks to a recent over-the-air update. That works in conjunction with the heads-up display feature, if it's been tipped on the option list that is. There are several engine configurations available for the F-Pace, the most interesting of which is a new turbocharged 2.0-litre petrol four-cylinder combined with a plug-in hybrid assistance. The six-cylinder is also available in either turbo or supercharged forms, along with a quartet of diesels. However, the thorn in the Jag's side is this, the Porsche Macan. Often lauded for its dynamic ability, the Macan is a convincing attempt to make SUVs fun to drive. Like the F-Pace, the Macan gets a great range of engines, especially at the top end of the price list. The cabin isn't quite as stylish as the Jaguar's, but it's beautifully made and logically laid out. Just prepare to be constantly wiping greasy fingerprints off those screens and touch sensitive control panels. Thankfully though, if driving quickly in SUVs is your thing, the Porsche is not necessarily the obvious choice. JLR's Special Vehicles Department has worked its magic on the F-Pace. It's called the SVR and with a 542 horsepower supercharged V8 under the bonnet, it's a match for any Macan. After a fast German coupe that isn't a BMW M4, well, you could do much worse than this, the Audi RS5. It's been around for a while now, and in that time it's remained a bit more under the radar than the V8 Merc C63 and the eye-catching BMW. It's very grown up and restrained, putting performance stats over all else. The twin turbo 2.9 litre V6 isn't as exciting as the V8 in a C63, but it's certainly effective. With 444 brake horsepower on tap, 4 to 62 takes just 3.9 seconds. The ferocious straight line speed is kept in check with the Quattro all wheel drive system, which maintains the RS5's mature character. Now, though, Audi has tweaked the RS5 for even more ability. It's called the RS5 Competition Pack, a limited edition with some choice extras. Starting with the visual upgrades, the competition gets 20-inch wheels with extra sticky Pirelli rubber. These grippier tyres shave a tenth off the 0-62 time, now down to 3.8 seconds. There's some more Alcantara in the cabin and some extra carbon. It also gets a new sports exhaust system that provides some extra noise. Further adding to the vocal nature of the competition, 8 kilograms of sound deadening is removed while the 155 mile per hour speed limiter is removed, allowing the RS5 to hit 180. If all that isn't enough though, Audi will sell you an even more hardcore Competition Plus model. This builds on the standard Competition pack with a new bespoke suspension setup. It's firmer and lower, with adjustable dampers and ride height. Competition Plus cars also get a new differential, designed to make the rather uninvolving RS5 a little more playful. The gearbox and ABS are also retuned, making the most of the new tyres. The RS5 then has been injected with some much needed excitement, but with no more than 100 of them expected to come to the UK, the M4 needn't worry. After the break, off-road in Ford's all-new Ranger.
coming up. A new pickup truck from Ford, but first... The outgoing Mercedes C-Class has sold two and a half million units since it came to market in 2014. It's an enormously successful car for the brand, so you might imagine that when designing a replacement, Mercedes pulled out all the stops. Well, this is it, the new C-Class. And at first, it may seem like Mercedes has undercooked it. For example, it shares the same platform as the old car, albeit a revised version of it. Then there's the styling. Yes, it looks good. It's current and sleek, but it's not a huge change from the old one, and certainly not as striking as some of Merck's other new cars we've seen in the last 12 months. So has Mercedes just played it safe? Well, you only have to take a quick look inside to see that the new C-Class is far from just a facelift. Inspired by the incredible new S-Class, the beautifully sculpted dashboard flows into the center console. There are some stylish new air vents and a chunky new steering wheel. The most striking new feature though must surely be the impressive 11.9 inch portrait infotainment screen. It comes as standard on all UK spec cars and can be linked directly to the user's various accounts, including Spotify. It can even be linked to your smart home devices, allowing you, for example, to turn up your central heating before you get home directly from your car. Another screen sits in front of the driver in place of traditional dials, displaying your speed and route guidance. As before, the C-Class is also available as an estate, and a coupe and convertible will soon be joining the lineup. Plug-in hybrid versions will join the selection of powertrains at some point after its launch next year. But buyers looking to get their hands on one of the first new C-Classes will have to settle for either a regular petrol or diesel model, or a mild hybrid-assisted 2-litre producing 254 brake horsepower. Fast AMG versions are on their way, although not with the roaring V8 we're used to. Instead, they'll use electrically assisted four cylinders, which is disappointing, but a sign of the times. However, even if you opt for the most basic cooking model, the C-Class does seem rather pricey, especially when compared to its old rivals from BMW and Audi. The starting price is just under £39,000, a decent chunk more than entry-level 3 Series or A4s. So what does the new Mercedes have that its competitors don't? Well, all models come absolutely filled with equipment. The base model sport trim comes with that fabulous infotainment screen, the digital instrument panel, LED headlights, adaptive suspension and the usual host of safety equipment. But is that enough to persuade buyers away from BMW and Audi? Well, starting with the BMW, and it's easy to see why it remains one of the most popular saloon cars on the market. Its rear-wheel drive layout and great engine selection make even the most basic model fun to drive. It's also one of BMW's more attractive cars in its current lineup, especially in a state form. For a coupe or convertible, you'll need to sacrifice some of the good looks and opt for a Benestrilled 4 Series. So how about the Audi? Well, it may lack the driving character of the BMW, but it is comfortable and incredibly well made. Its mild hybrid system works well and there's a broad range of petrol and diesel engines to choose from with either front or all-wheel drive. However, as impressive as the BMW and Audi may be, they have immediately been aged by the C-Class. Its stunning cabin and S-Class tech will be a huge draw to buyers.
The Ford Ranger has been a huge success for Ford in the UK. The pickup truck customer base here might be small when compared with North America, but the Ranger's 40% market share is certainly not to be sniffed at, especially as it goes up against the formidable Toyota Hilux. Despite it being more popular than ever, though, Ford has decided it's time for a new one, and here it is. As usual, there are numerous different trim levels to choose from, including Wild Track and Storm Track. Intriguingly, though, they've already revealed the new top of the range Raptor model, complete with F 150 style orange paint and enormous Ford branded front grille. The Raptor will, in fact, be the first Ranger model to go on sale in the UK this year, with the less performance orientated models arriving in 2023 while an electric version is also said to be in the works. The Ranger engine lineup includes the existing 2-litre diesels and 2.3 petrol, while a V6 diesel is returning thanks to Ford's tie-in with Volkswagen. The new Ranger has been co-developed alongside VW's new Amarok, giving Ford access to VW's range of power plants. The Raptor, meanwhile, gets a 3-litre petrol V6, producing 284 brake horsepower, a vast improvement over the old diesel model. To ensure it's sportier to drive, the Raptor gets an anti-lag system to keep the turbo spooled up for three seconds after you've lifted your foot off the throttle, meaning it responds more quickly when you resume accelerating. It also gets a trick active exhaust with four noise levels ranging from quiet to Baja, with Ford describing the latter as almost a straight-through exhaust system. The 10-speed gearbox has been carried over from the old Raptor, but it's been retuned to optimize performance. The Raptor can now also be switched from all-wheel to rear-wheel drive, something that should provide some entertainment in muddy fields. Ford very sensibly, however, says it's for saving fuel. To help keep its power down, the Raptor gets a bespoke chassis set up with Fox dampers, aluminium control arms and plenty of underbody protection to resist damage from off-road use. The dampers are specially made for the Raptor and can react to suspension movements, stiffening up when necessary, allowing you to push on over any terrain. As impressive as the Raptor is, though, it does have its drawbacks. For starters, it's priced from over £57,000, and that's an awful lot for a pickup truck, especially as its off-road chassis modifications reduce the maximum payload meaning commercial buyers can't claim the VAT back. And while the interior is nice and a great improvement over the old model, it looks rather underwhelming in a near 60 grand car. The regular Ranger then perhaps makes a more logical choice, especially for those planning on using their truck for towing or carrying stuff. How then does it compare to one of the most rugged and work-focused trucks out there, the Isuzu D-Max? Well, the Ford may look a bit fancier inside, but the D-Max comes with plenty of kit, especially on the high-spec V-Cross model. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included, along with a host of safety tech like Lane Keep Assist and Sign Recognition. The engine lineup isn't as comprehensive, with a small but tough four-cylinder diesel motor providing adequate performance. The key to the Isuzu's appeal, though, is the price tag. Before VAT, a double cab D-Max will set you back less than £29,000, and a single cab is five grand less. And then, of course, there's the new Volkswagen Amarok, the truck that shares its platform with the Ford Ranger. And while there isn't a Raptor equivalent just yet, the new Amarok is available with a vast selection of powertrain options, ranging from 2-litre turbo diesels, 
to a fully fledged turbocharged Ford Focus RS engine pumping out 300 horsepower. VW hasn't yet confirmed exactly which engines will come to the UK, but expect plenty of diesel options with manuals and autos. Crucially, the Amrock can now tow up to 3.5 tonnes, the maximum allowed for this type of vehicle. That puts it in line with its rivals, an essential selling point. And while it may look a bit posher than the Ranger, it'll still keep up off-road. All models get four-wheel drive, with an 80cm wading depth, only 10cm off a Land Rover Defender. Prices are yet to be announced, but we expect it to command a premium over the Ford. Both the Ford Ranger and the new Volkswagen Amarok then have some stiff competition. The Raptor though, well that's still in a class of its own. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out the new Mercedes EQS SUV.